Hi, this is Dan with Orgoman, and today we will be reviewing the SN1 and SN2 mechanisms. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgoman products and the author of the Dat Destroyer book. I'm going to go over with you today a really great question for the DAT on the SN1 and the SN2 mechanisms. Before I do so, though, I would like to show you something that's extremely rare. This is an autograph business card, as well as the picture of the 1965 Nobel Prize winner, um, Professor Woodward, Robert Woodward of Harvard University, and I thought I'd share it with you. Um, extremely rare to get a signature. He wasn't the most friendliest guy. All right, come around. Um, let's have a look on a really great reaction. I want to know which reaction occurs fastest in an SN1 reaction. Well, in an SN1 reaction, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to form a carbocation. Now, we're going to go through each one and see what kind of carbocation can be formed. First of all, when the chlorine leaves here, you would put a plus charge on a benzene ring. So it would look like this. And you're going to see this is hideously unstable. Why? At each corner of a benzene ring, as you can see, is a p orbital. Now, the plus charge is going to be located in a different orbital, in a different plane, in, a, in an sp2 orbital. And because it's in a different plane, it cannot be stabilized. So that means the carbocation would be unstable. B and C, let me make this a little nicer, CL. B and C would both give primary carbocations, and we all know they are also hideously unstable. Now we go to D and E. Now, D and E both have the T-butyl group, and as you can see, they're both written as wedges. The T-butyl group must go in the equatorial position. So if you drew the first one in the chair conformation, the T-butyl group is going up because it's a wedge, and it's got to be going equatorial. And the bromine's a wedge, which means the bromine must also be pointing up. We are here, the bromine is pointing down. So, when you lose the bromine, you would form from both choices, D and E. This is D and this is E. Both of these choices would give a secondary carbocation. They both give the same carbocation. And you're very inclined to think that the rates would be the same, but be careful. If you first realize that the equatorial position bromine is the lower energy. And if I diagrammed it here, it comes from a lower energy well. It's got to go over the transition state and form a carbocation. Where D, if the bromine is axial, it's going to be at a higher potential energy. So I'll put it over here. Now I hope you can see in letter D, the energy to begin with is higher. So because it's higher in energy, meaning axial is less stable. It won't need to go uphill as far. And if you look at the diagram, it only needs to go up a little bit, whereas the more stable, equatorially placed bromine is at a lower potential energy well. Well, the guy at the higher energy starts off higher, so he doesn't need to go as far. So therefore, that would mean he would go faster. So the correct answer would be choice D, in which the bromine is placed in the axial position. I hope this helps and gives you a good understanding of an SN1, SN2 type of question you'll see on the DAT. All right, good day to you. I'll see you in study group. Bye-bye.